Welcome to Light and Shadow. I'm your host, Maya Washington. It's time to bring some inspirational sports stories out of the shadows and into the light. Welcome, welcome. Today's guest is Hannah Foslin. Now, every time Hannah gets to answer the question, what do you do with I am a documentary photographer that specializes in sports. She pinches herself to make sure it's not a dream. Sports have always filled Hannah's life from her father's stories of winning the Big Ten individual championship in the two mile for the University of Minnesota to the dreams of a young girl twirling around the living room wanting to be Christy Yamaguchi. Hannah is based in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota. Her international clients include Getty Images and the Associated Press. Her work has appeared in publications all around the world, and you've probably even seen a few of her famous shots without knowing it. Welcome, Hannah. Hi, Maya. Thank you for having me today. So to start, Hannah, I want to know, are there any mantras or mottos or um, I don't know, words of wisdom that, that you live by? So when I was 16 years old, I went to the Minneapolis Institute of Arts with my mother to see a photography exhibition that she thought I'd be very interested in and absolutely fell in love with this photographer, Bernice Abbott, at that time. Um, and there's a few quotes from her that absolutely have stuck with me throughout the years, um, one of which is, I'm not a nice girl. I'm a photographer. And Ooh, another say one. Say that again. Being, say that. I'm not again. a. I'm not a nice girl. I'm a photographer. Which is one of those things where some days, you know, uh, especially being in sports, you need to to remind yourself that um, you're a photographer sometimes first, and your your uh, gender identity comes second. Um, and then, um, you know, another one is from, from Bernice is, let me make sure I get this one correct, is imagine a world without photography. One could only imagine. And those two kind of quotes from her are, are something that, um, stick with me and, um, really remind me why I do what I do. So thinking about that, right, in your in your career, um, where does that, that show up for you? Obviously, um, you are a woman who happens to yes. be a photographer. Um, yes. So, you know, how, how does that keep you motivated um, when you're uh, shooting at a game or a match or um, any of the number of um, sporting events that you cover as a photojournalist? You know... For for me, I'm there first as a documentarian. I am there to document that big play. I'm there to tell the story of that game, that season. That's sort of my job on the day to day, um, and to remind myself that um, the people next to me also have the same job. Um, and so, reminding myself that yes I might be a female but we're all equal here is really important and um I was lucky enough with Minneapolis and St. Paul being kind of the first market I really worked in was when I started my internship with the Minnesota Twins was there were a lot of females in the photo wells and it wasn't an odd thing to work a game where maybe there was one or two guys and four or five women working a baseball game and so it's one of those things that people are like, you're always in a man's world. You're always in a man's world. And I'm like, well, now I feel that with retirements and buyouts and things like that happening at newspapers. But when I started and for the first sort of five, six years of my career, I never felt like I was the only female at any event. So I think that's really um, fascinating and also makes me think a bit about what we have in common, right? That we had dads that sort of helped us understand that we could be and, and do anything. Um, yes. And we have one, you know, very interesting thing in common. Um, we are both daughters of Big Ten champions. So yes. um, tell me how your dad um, 
inspired you uh, as an athlete, either through his uh, experiences or the things that you were interested in when it came to sport, and even maybe your uh, later career as a photographer? Yeah, so I was always a little bit of a a daddy's girl. Um, I always wanted to be hanging out with my dad and my brothers, and they were always on the basketball court or playing tennis or going for runs and bike rides, going swimming. Like that was us at the, in the summer, we were always going and doing and playing. And um, it was just one of those things. And in the winter, you know, we were downhill skiers. And so it was just one of those things where, you know, he would talk about running the two mile and he would do all the, these things but then the fact that he treated me the exact same way as my two older brothers and made sure that I was playing horse or you know if if I came out to the basketball court now it's time to play pig because I'd get bored by the time you know a game of horse was over um (laughs) so basketball really wasn't my sport despite the fact that I'm six one um But it was one of those things where he always instilled this kind of athletic mentality that you keep working, you keep practicing, you keep getting better. And then it was kind of in high school, both of my brothers had moved out and I really didn't feel connected with my dad anymore, but I knew he watched baseball every night. And so I had, I basically... I had a crush on a boy in high school that played baseball. So I decided I'd sit down with my dad and learn baseball. There were multiple motives for it, but um, we sat and he taught me this beautiful game that a lot of people, you know, find boring, but for me, it's just this gorgeous game and it's artistic and it's, I I always look at athletes and you know I I can see them as ballerinas I can see them as kind of these very artistic big beasty guys <laughs> if you will that there's movements that they do and athleticism that um then in photography I'm able to capture and once I started um working in photography and working in sports photography like I'd have a wild game and I'd be like, dad, I'm not really sure, you know, what's going on with hockey. And he would literally cut out newspaper articles for me so that I knew who the top scorer was for the, the wild to, you know, be like, make sure you get pictures of this guy, this guy's who, who's going to be in the paper tomorrow. And um, that was always just so helpful from, from my dad to kind of be supporting me and be my research assistant some days. It sounds like he must have been very proud of you, um, you know, athlete to athlete to mm-hmm. you being an artist. Yeah, yeah. He he was, I mean, he's proud of all of his kids, but it was one of those things. It was just a special connection um, with me and me and him having the, the sports thing. And, you know, I'd, I'd get done working a game and, you know, he'd, he'd have me over so he could look at my photos and he'd, you know, he was a mathematician. And so he would um, see a photo of somebody and read off their stat line in his head, like it was just in his head. And um, that always uh, really impressed me. So it sounds like um, from a young age, aside from the, you know, a uh, desire to to uh get closer to your crush um uh, it, it sounds like you're very inspired by um the grace and 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 aesthetic beauty of sport and um just as you're describing uh baseball for example i mean you have this like beautiful uh geometry just spatial relationship of of a baseball diamond and the colors and and it, I mean, it really is it is such a beautiful um, palette or landscape for um, a composition. So when did those kind of uh, impulses that you were naturally having as you were observing um, the players on the field, how their bodies moved, but also 
um, the environment um, itself, like when did it click that, okay, I, this is something I want to photograph and uh, something I actually want to pursue professionally? So I remember, um, so very early on, I can remember being like five or six and finding out that you can't expose film to light or it ruins the film. Um, you know, I think I was, I was going to go visit my, my grandmother and, um, I kept popping up in the back of the camera and obviously there's no photos from that day. Um, but, um, through high school, I was taking um, photography classes and just absolutely loving being in a dark room. And I remember um, volunteering and we we um, we worked at the Metrodome at one of the the vendors. You know, it was dollar dog night or whatever. And we were doing. Um, and so I was working, you know, a cash register and I got a break and I was able to go out and kind of just glimpse and see the field. And I just remember being up, you know, on the upper concourse and looking out at this field from behind home plate and being like, this is gorgeous. I want to photograph this. And then watching photographers, you know, between innings move positions and being like, oh, photographers photograph this. I could do that. Could I do that? I'm going to do that. And so it was one of those things when I started um, uh, my sophomore year of college, I already had decided that I wanted to be the team photographer for the twins. And my internship was with the Minnesota twins. And now I work almost every home game for the twins for Getty images. And it's absolutely amazing. And so you, in addition to the twins, um, you cover other sporting events as well yeah. um, here locally. And then I think you've had some other, you know, opportunities outside of, of Minnesota. So could you give us a rundown of all the various uh, things that you have covered? Yes. Yeah, so I have covered so much. Um, so I cover all the Vikings home games preseason and regular season. I cover a lot of um, wild games. I cover Timberwolves games. I cover go for basketball, go for football. Um, so in Minnesota, you know, basically if there's a sporting event, most likely I'm, I'm there when, um, when the big soccer teams come through, I'm also working those. Um, I was, you know, I I may do one MLS game a season. Soccer kind of isn't uh, high ranking um, on my on the list of things I get assigned. But then, um, you know, in January, uh, I had a high school basketball game that I was assigned uh, because it was um, some of the top recruits for college were playing against each other, and so they wanted some stock photos of those guys playing and um sent me to go cover that game and so you've you've had um a, a few really uh everything that you do I must say is beautiful yeah. so make sure that Aww, um, thank people you. know how they can find your Instagram and your um, website so um what's your Instagram first and foremost my Instagram is photo Foslin. And, and same you, with my um, website. Could you spell your <laughs> last name for, for those who <laughs> might need a little help? Uh, so it's photo Foslin and it's P H O T O Foslin is F O S L I E N. And so um, there are a few um, pretty spectacular, popular photos of yours. Um, I'm thinking of one that was um, awarded uh, a baseball image, but I'm also thinking of a really uh, important football image. Um, do you, do I you have a don't what know I'm talking about? <laughs> what you're talking about, and Stefan Diggs did not catch that ball. No, um, so I um, photographed the Minneapolis miracle from the opposite end zone so I have Stefan Diggs up in the air catching the ball 
and uh, the defender kind of falling out of the way. Um, and it, a few people have seen that one, I believe. And so what was, what was that like when you realized, because I know, I'm sure everybody is, you know, you're doing your job, you're, you're yeah. shooting everything yeah. I, I'm assuming yeah. is the approach. Um, but what was it like to realize that you had caught that, that moment that, you know, really had an impact on, on how the, how the season played out? Yeah. So I, I, it's one of those things where I have watched the replays. I have, you know, I have seen it, but me through my lens, I saw, I believe it was right was the other receiver in the area fall out of bounds. And because the shutter clicks and you don't see when the shutter clicks, so you get black. I wasn't sure if Wright caught it or Diggs caught it. I wasn't sure if my focus was on Wright or Diggs. Like I, to this day, think that he fell out of bounds. Um, I can watch the highlights over and over again, but what I saw through my mind's eye is not what actually happened. So, um, controversy. (laughs) So my, my, my feeling was, was that, he got himself into field goal range, fell out of bounds, and then went celebrating. Mm. Um, so I continued to to photograph it. And as soon as I couldn't see digs anymore, um, I switched over to Case Keenum, the quarterback, to get his celebration. And then I remember – that was kind of done and I wasn't really seeing anything and people were starting to walk in front of me. I looked up at the big screen and I realized that he'd scored a touchdown. And so I had to pick up my camera and then I'm trying to get, I was near where the saints tunnel is. So I was getting saints players um, dejectedly walking off the field and then trying (laughs) to get to, you know, the team celebrating at the other end zone in the process while carrying all my equipment. Um, So I actually didn't know what I had until maybe 45 minutes, an hour later, when my editor basically told me I had it. Wow. Um, Because I never looked at the back of my camera. I didn't do any of that. I just kept shooting and kept trying to find moments. And so my... um, I remember my editor finding me on the field and saying, I need your long glass now. And so I handed him my, I tried to get the card out, but my hands were shaking too much to just hand him the card. And I just ended up handing him the camera and and the lens, Um, which was also helpful because then as I was running after different players, um, because I was on I was on quarterback, so I needed the quarterback handshake. Um, so as I was running after them, I had a lighter load, not having my my long glass on me. Wow. So, yeah. And then the rest, yep. as they say, is is you know miracle history, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's, well, and it's one really of those exciting. things where, and it was bizarre being you know based here in Minnesota after it happened because I know like my mom's friends from church were like calling my mom (laughs) to hear what it was like for me to be there. You know, like it was just one of those things where like everybody wanted a piece of that story. Mm -hmm. And so knowing me and knowing I'd been there and I had that photo, they were then trying to talk to my mom about what it was like for me to be there and get that photo. So, so cool. Um, that was super yeah. cool. That I remember how exciting that was and yeah. um that was twenty eighteen and I um happened to be in New Orleans uh for a film festival and um took an How Uber did it go over festival. down there? Oh my goodness. I was in the car with this Uber driver from New Orleans and you know, total kind of New Orleans guy, you know, he had the the accent that's kind of familiar to me. Um, since my mom and and dad's family are are both from Louisiana, but, um, not necessarily all of us, uh, from New Orleans, but 
you know, I'm trying to make small talk in the Uber at, you know, five in the morning. And the Uber driver was real sweet and, you know, Louisiana charming with me until I, he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Minnesota. <laughs> oh, he had some post-traumatic stress syndrome just started coming out of him. He grew all kind of, you know, kind of, kind of cold and grumpy. And I didn't dare say um, anything about what I knew about the Minnesota Vikings or that my dad played for the, I, I just kept my mouth closed yeah. and said, oh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, from Minnesota. So I, I think there's some Saints fans who who uh, who would love to hear your perspective. Um, <laughs> uh, even that they didn't later. actually win the game. And, yeah. So I think yeah. that's you know that that one will have to leave to um, somebody's uh, behind the scenes um, documentary expose someday, where you'll get to contribute. <laughs> Your, your your perspective I, I I swear he did score a touchdown. <laughs> and then yeah. you and you'll have the um the the roll of footage uh to either prove or disprove, you know. So yeah. also I think um one of the images I'm thinking of, I think you won um uh, an award for was um just this beautiful I, I remember seeing um baseball diamond sand like you could see the beautiful yeah. grains of, of sand um so can you talk about that photo yeah so um let's see last year i was awarded the um visual mn sports photographer of the year um and one of the photos from that was um a guy sliding into third base but the focus is just on his hand going through the dirt and kicking up the dirt. So it's going between his fingers. And it's just one of those things where, um, you know, sometimes I will say this about baseball. It can be repetitive and not repetitive all at the same time. And so what I'm trying to do every day is make it interesting for myself and then hopefully the people looking at the photos, Um, you know, there's always going to be a picture picture, but I'm looking for a slightly different moment than the day before in in that. Um, And every picture has their own routine on the mound and things like that. But with um, very rarely do you get photos sliding into third base head on. And while I've done that, I've always been interested in how the dirt and the dust will kick up. Um, one of my favorite things to shoot is actually um, Little League because their fields tend to be much dirtier and dustier. Mm-hmm. And if you can get, get really nice light on that. Um, and unfortunately, my schedule hasn't allowed me to be able to to shoot that as much as I used to. But I was trying to find that kind of moment in the big leagues where the um, where they water the infield so you don't get that dusty feel necessarily. And so... This is just a moment where, you know, while um, you typically focus on the the guy's face sliding into the the base, I decided to shift focus to his hand going through the dirt. It's it's really a beautiful image. Now, can people see either of these images on your site or your Instagram, or um, is there a way that they could check out these images that we're talking about? Yeah, so so Instagram is probably the best place to see my my more recent work. Um I'm hoping to get some some website updating going on here uh coming up, but um right now the the Instagram's the most current work. Awesome. Now, obviously, um you are very talented and have created great beauty and and bring a lot of um perspective uh as an artist to the work but have you faced any challenges you know as you've pursued your dreams uh working in sports and uh as an artist um whether that's in your professional life or your personal life and if so how have you overcome those uh challenges to um be successful and 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 have a rewarding life and career yeah i've I think it's one of those things where it's 
so beneficial that I had so many strong women come through this market um, before me. But I will say that, you know, some days just out of the blue, a fan will say something or a coach or, you know, and, and usually they don't, you know, they're not, there's not necessarily malice behind it, but it's something that reminds you that you are a woman in that situation. Um, There are things that, that will happen to me where I don't feel as protected um, physically as I would, I would um, like to, to feel. And, you know, it's one of those things where I can handle one or two of those and, in a day or a week and be fine. Um, But it always seems that when it happens once, it will happen five times on like the same day. And it's like, what is in the water today, guys? Like um, specifically with me, um, football, I wear knee pads because I'm kneeling most of the game or I'm sitting sitting cross-legged in the end zone. And drunk fans are not the nicest people let's just let's just say that so um Mm -hmm. it's it can be it can be really tough um I think my skin has gotten thicker over the years um things that would bother me in my 20s don't bother me in my 30s um that also being said is ever since the story broke on Harvey Weinstein Mm -hmm. it was Like a week after that story broke, my world was completely different. Like fans were quieter. Like I wasn't hearing things. People weren't talking to me um, as much. And I was able to do my job. And I remember talking to some of the male photographers and I'm like, is this what it's like to be you? Wow. You know, to not to not have somebody touch your hair, to not have somebody come into your personal space to wanting to look through your lens. Um, you know, those little things, it, I mean, it's just been fantastic. Um, the change in culture that's currently going on. And I think, I mean, isn't it something that um, a, in our lifetime, we get to see that shift. Um, yeah. knowing that our, our mother's um, generation and, and my older sisters, you know, they didn't, they, they didn't get to have those experiences in their, you know, young adult mm-hmm. um, life, you know, to where our culture shifted to say time's up. This is not acceptable yeah. behavior. This is not acceptable language. Um, yeah. And that the culture says, this is not okay. This is not uh, locker room talk or boys being boys. And, um, your your work is of uh, such stellar, amazing quality. You know, um, mm-hmm. it's just beautiful, inspiring um, photography. As someone who loves the sport and who respects sports, um, and I, I commend you for powering through what I can only imagine mm-hmm. um, would be difficult uh, working conditions at times. Um, when people have been inappropriate. So kudos kudos to you. And um, you are doing a lot to ensure that you and and others can feel safe at work and can um, really uh, achieve at your highest potential. So Mm -hmm. um, what what are you doing to hopefully um, usher in other um, women's voices or diverse voices um, or those uh, interested in your craft as a sports photographer? How, how are you uh, sort of inspiring the next generation? Well, one, one thing I do is I, I like to talk to the photographers I'm currently working with. And I like to, you know, point out to them. I'm like, hey, look around this room. Look around the field. Do you see anybody else who looks like me? Do you see anybody who looks like the athletes we're covering? Do you see, you know, do you see diversity around this building? Like I just tried to to put that nugget in their ear and, 
you know, remind them that. And then, you know, if a fan says something or if, you know, um, I'd have somebody who would run his fingers through my hair and um, I'd come back into the workroom and be like, did you guys have somebody run their fingers through your hair today at work? Cause I did like, I just let them know what's happening to us so that hopefully they can um, be a better um, ally mm-hmm. to the next person that comes through. Because I think that's, that's one of those things where I feel that the the photographers I work with respect me and how hard I work and how hard I hustle to do my job. But then I want to remind them that on top of that, there's a little extra that somebody who is not a white man is dealing with so that and my hope is is that um, you know anybody's willing to come and talk to me privately about things that they're encountering. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that I know that women specifically are. I know that there's a couple photographers when um, you know of color that when they work together, I see them kind of off to the side talking, and I'm so glad that they're able to talk to each other because that's not something that I understand fully. Um, what it's like to to be a person of color in these environments. Um, so I just I, that's something that I'm constantly working with. Um, when like I'll tweet things when fans say things to me. I'm like, hey, this fan just said this to me. That's cool. Just you know, it so it can even go beyond the the audience of um, the people I'm working with that day. That's really. Um awesome and powerful (laughs) um, of you. I won't even say brave, right? Um, Because I think you're even reframing what bravery is. You know, bravery uh, was all all the times that you you kind of weathered that storm. Um, But I I really think it's exciting to see the power that you found Mm -hmm. in in using your voice uh, as a photographer, but also um, through tweets, through uh, communication in the um, press room and, and any other places um, mm-hmm. that um, need it. So um, thank you for that. Now, you also teach um, at a Sports Tutor Academy. Do you want to give a little plug for what that is in case we have any young folks or not so young folks mm-hmm. who are looking for ways to sharpen and hone their um, skills as sports photographers? Yeah, so sports Sport Shooter Academy is this amazing thing. I attended twice as a student, um, the first time after my first internship year, and then um, again after my second intern. I, I interned with the Twins for two seasons. So, um, And each time it was absolutely amazing and life-changing and reframed my brain as to what a good sports photo was because – I was thinking what what's in the paper is a good sports photo, not realizing that there's these more artistic, there's these more offbeat, there's these other photos that really, truly um, make a good sports photo. Um, and you kind of combine then the action together with these and it creates just an amazing portfolio. Um, and about five, six years ago now, I was brought on as a faculty member and it, it, it's one of those things where I'm so glad I get to go pay it forward to, to the students. Um, and it's everybody from, um, you know, college students all the way through to people wanting to take great photos of their grandchildren playing sports. And so it's this amazing mix of um, just people who are passionate about learning, which I am, and then um, you know, sports and wanting, wanting to improve their skills. And I just, I absolutely love being able to go, we go, it's a five day workshop. We do kind of presentations, but then you're shooting for three of those days and we're editing. And this last year we actually, I wasn't part of the group that was at the basketball tournament, but they were filing on a deadline 
as if they were at an actual sporting event like wow. I would do. And so you're getting real world experience and you're having these teachers in your ear being like, what's going on with the light over there? What happens if you backlight this? Look at the bullpen and the pitcher warming up and what's that scene looking like? And you're, you're having these instructors that have years and years of experience and, and instructors that I've looked up to my entire career, you know, sitting there and helping you, you know, the saying is see better, shoot better. And Mm. so we're just there to help you see better, shoot better. Amazing. Well, I thank you so much, Hannah, for uh, chatting with me today and and sharing your amazing uh, experiences with our audience. Uh, just so much thank you for, for, for being here with us today. Well, thank you for letting me, you know, talk about my, my work and my experiences as an artist and a photojournalist. Well, if you have enjoyed this conversation with Hannah and uh, want other people to know about it, we encourage you to subscribe, to share, uh, to, to give us your feedback on uh, how you're enjoying these stories that we're bringing to you. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone is uh, enjoying the memory of live sports and um, looking forward to hopefully uh, in the not too distant future, the opportunity to uh, return to the places and spaces we love uh, to enjoy live sporting events. Uh, Hannah's website is a great place to spend some time um, while we sort of approach summer and, and some uncertainty. So thank you for joining us, everyone. We will see you next time. 